It's a real honor and a joy and a pleasure for me today to introduce our special speaker, and we all know and love her very much, Dr. Mila Mercator. I mean, a lot of people who are retired today, the dreams that they have to travel the world, they don't even want to drive. They don't even want to go down the stairs. So we really need to change because see, work versus labor. Labor is a curse that God has broken. In the book of Genesis, God says, Adam, because you disobeyed me, curse is the ground for your sake. Thorns and thistles it shall grow, and with the sweat of your brows you shall labor. Why did Jesus have a crown of thorns? It was not just for a prop. He took the curse from the ground, the thorns and thistles, and put it in his brow so you and I do not have to sweat and labor. Come on. If today you are laboring, then you are not working. You are still under that curse limitation. But when we go to work, because it is our work, it is our calling, it is our covenant blessing, it's going to change the atmosphere. Heaven is going to open the windows and pour you a blessing that you will not have in a room to take it in.
owner, of course, but how, when did this uh, burden in your heart begin about the marketplace, the ministry to the marketplace? I think this is fantastic. Yes, I, I believe when the Lord spoke to me in that morning when I was speaking to, to infiltrate the marketplace, I didn't know, um, you know, how much time, uh, the energy that it requires, and, and the, the extent of this. I just knew that I had to obey that voice. And uh, through the years, the Lord has shown me that the marketplace are men and women uh, who have a job, who have a business, working for a business, buying and selling. You know the, what that is? That's 99, more than 99.9% .9 of the church. Yes. And the Lord really just showed me, Pastor, that uh, the gospel has really been uh, given the, the, the Great Commission. was yes. given really not just to the church. You see, it's been given to all of us, to the church, to the family, to the marketplace. And, um, and, I, and, and I started really, you know, just asking the Lord, I said, Lord, what is it really in the marketplace that we need to do? And you know what the Lord started showing me? For an average Christian, for an average Christian who really loves the Lord, very excited, one of your awesome members of the church comes to mo Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Wednesday, yes. they probably spend 12 hours, really a good Christian, That's 12 right. hours a week. And those who are working for a boss, they spend time with their family as much as they can. You know, their best waking hours are spent in the, in the, in the jobs. That's true. And the marketplace people, uh, Dr. Mike, is that they spend 40 to 60 hours a week mm. in the marketplace. My goodness. And nobody's discipling them. Wow. These are men and women who would not even, don't have a pastor, don't have, you know, anybody praying for them. They don't even go to church. They have never heard of the Bible. And I'm telling you, the Lord gave us a great harvest in the marketplace. That's a marvelous revelation that you have from the Lord. And I realize those 40 to 60 hours. Yes. And here, like you said, a lot of them don't go to church. They've never heard the word. What a marvelous uh, field, as Jesus said, the, the, the fields are ripe into harvest. Amen. What a harvest field out there among the marketplace folks, the business community. Amen. And the interesting thing about it is that we don't need a pulpit. You see, a lot, right. a lot of God's people today have been so discipled to think that we are, uh, we are church Christians when we are kingdom Christians. Yeah. You see, the, as I always say this, the church Christian, Christians are so limited to the pulpit and the four corners of the church. Yes. The kingdom Christians has been asked by the Lord, ask me, and I will give you nations for your inheritance. Amen. You know, that is so exciting. <laughs> it's so broad. And, it's, and so, you know, when we started doing that, Pastor, I felt like, uh, the Lord really started putting in my heart, ask me for nations. Yes. And not only that we travel to nations, but we do have nations that the Lord has brought to our work workplace. Yes, that's right, isn't it? Yes. Imagine even in Southern California, especially, we have all nations yes, represented. exactly. And you know, one thing that's so beautiful about this is the reality of what Jesus said, he told his disciples. You follow me. And you know what? More and more, the Lord is saying to me, let my life influence you yes. and let my lifestyle be the sermon that I preach. And right. that's what we teach all the marketplace people. I said, you don't need a pulpit. God has asked you to, to let them observe you, follow as you obey my command. <clears throat> this year, I believe, as we ask for a new eyes and new ears, God is going to say to us, the promise I've given you that you will have the mind of Christ, you shall have. <laughs> this is the place where God is going to say to us that we are no longer going to call the prophets, you know. It's in the Bible, Google it, in the book of Hosea. It says that because of the intensity of their sin, they call the prophets. They laugh at the prophets and say they're foolish. Mm -hmm. And they hear the words of the wise as they are maniacs. That's, That's what's right. happening to the world today. That's right. But I am telling you, God is going to put a spotlight again on the church. A church who have ears and church who have ears mm -hmm. and Amen. eyes. Amen. Because God is reminding us. We are touching the heavenly realm. We are touching and piercing darkness. And we are touching the supernatural and the miraculous. Amen. In fact, when we pray, we're going to start seeing our families coming to the Lord. God is going to see, as I seen this morning, the expansion of the walls of this university. I see the walls of the expansion of this church. 
there is a pulsation that I feel in the spirit of a movement that's happening here. Amen. I believe this is the gifting that the Lord is going to give each one of us, that we are going to speak the language of the spirit. We're going to start seeing children who's walking by rambunctious children and seeing them as the future statesmen and women of their generation. Amen. We're going to start seeing our brothers and sisters coming in and yes, they're going to be healed. They're walking, hallelujah, with the wholeness of the Lord. Amen. Because God is looking for us to be a witness to agree Amen. what is already done in heaven Amen. so it shall be done on earth. Amen. That's why it is important for us to have our eyes open and ears open because God is looking for a man and woman here on earth to agree with what heaven has already declared. I want to start a little bit about how the Lord has called me. As I said before, I always repeat this. You know what? I just really wanted to be a housewife. I wanted to just marry a doctor, spend all this money and sip tea. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord drafted me one day. I was praying in the prayer room and, and I, I, I heard a voice. I, I don't hear that to me often. I have a witness in the spirit, but this time I heard a voice that says, I want you to start a business. Mm -hmm. now, I was seeking the Lord, that Lord use me. I want you to use me. I am ready for you to use me. I want you, I will be full time for you. And then the Lord gave me the answer, I want you to start a business. Now that was not the expectation that I wanted to hear when I was praying, because I was ready to go and be, you know, be a minister for the Lord. And uh, I had an advice from my pastor at Mila. There are places that you can go that I cannot go. There are people that will listen to you that will not listen to me. There are sermons today that is being preached at work by men and women observing us at work before they can hear a message from you. Because all of us, especially me, I felt that in that very moment when the Lord has just overwhelm my heart of the responsibility of the marketplace ministry. I always have these two questions to him, like what we call a complaint. Well, I always complain to the Lord, Lord, you know, I don't really have time. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a minister, I'm a businesswoman, in that order. And I said, Lord, I have dishes to wash and I have a home to clean. And I felt like the Lord said to me, Mila, whatever you do, you do it heartily unto the Lord and not unto men. Everything we do must be done unto the Lord in the book of Colossians chapter 3. And I found that the Lord has taught me about the word of order. Voda is a word, Hebrew word, where work and worship, you know, root word work and worship. And God spoke to my heart that work, business is ministry. If you're going to do it according to what the Lord has spoken to your heart. So when we wake up in the morning and we make our first footprint, our ministry has just started. So making coffee for my husband, or when we are asked to mop the floor, or clean toilet bowls, we are doing it unto the Lord. It's a Buddha, it's worship. The second way I'm going to be continuing um, understanding and knowledge. All of us have knowledge, but we need to understand the knowledge that we are learning. And we use the wisdom of His Word to dissect the knowledge that we're learning. Knowledge that comes directly raw from the tree, the knowledge of tree of good and evil, complicates our lives if we do not process it through the wisdom of this world. <clears throat> you cannot just learn business 101 from the world and not bring it through the process of the world. Because once you do that, you're going to only get the venom of complication instead of the truth that will set you free. We need to understand knowledge and we need to apply the wisdom of his word so we can prosper in the right place. <clears throat> you see, the, the knowledge of the world does exactly what the serpent does. It just glides effortless, effortlessly into our mindset. We sit down in order meetings, you know, that's how it's supposed to be done. Well, we do it all the time, this is how we do it. You know, that, that's what the, the, the serpent does, he glides. And you know what the serpent does? He embraces the contour of the earth. Everything about flesh, everything about self-promotion, everything about a self-agenda is the priority in the commerce. And God is saying, as you are men and women in the marketplace, you need to understand the principle of His Word and apply the truth. Walk, allow the water of God's Word to, to realign your thinking, to realign and dissect what you're hearing. 
And because that's it, that's how I want you to be prospering.